especially now that we have PSSR, which once again seems like kind of a disease. Ooh, I just, I just got PSSR yesterday, I'm so bad. If you guys were asking yourselves where or when RDNA 4 was going to be released, well, AMD just announced it, and they announced it will be released in the early 2025. Now, early 2025 might mean like January, February, maybe March, that's early 2025, I would suppose something like January or February, at least that's what I hope. And we also have some new hints for FSR4, and this was stated early 2025 by Dr. Lisa Su. And by the way, if this is the first time you're watching my videos, I'm Fabio Pisco. Ho! Oh, GVG Mo! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Also, this is the first time I'm using this microphone in like years, I guess years, after I got my blue ember one, the condenser one, I never use this one, the, the dynamic one anymore, oh but since I now have a new studio, I, I, I'm kind of trying to use two microphones, uh, not at the same time, but at least in the same position always, so that microphone is kind of the movable one, and this one will be the one to be here. If this one doesn't, well, doesn't fare well in terms of sound, I'll most, like, most likely get a Shure SM7B or uh, uh, DB, the new one, whatever, but I'll get a new microphone, but yeah. So according to video cards, AMD Radeon RX 8000 coming early next year, as, uh, as we said, maybe February, January, we don't know. AMD has remained largely silent about its plans for the next-gen GPUs, similar to Intel and NVIDIA. Yes, we know that the RTX 5090 will be the first one to be released, at least that's what we get from the, from the leaks, and we do know that um, the, new, the new Intel GPUs are a thing, so they weren't cancelled, uh, and we are seeing more and more leaks about um, the Al not the alchemist, the alchemist are the first ones, the battle mage architecture. So it will come, and the new Intel Arc GPUs are a thing, and I'm actually eager to see what they bring in terms of price performance. And yeah, the same for the AMD ones with RDNA 4. Outside of rumors and leaks, gamers considering future upgrades have limited information from official sources. Also true, however, AMD has confirmed that its next gen gaming GPUs will not target the enthusiast segment, aligning with the early rumors suggesting there won't be a Navi 31 successor in the RDNA 4 lineup. Instead, gamers can expect mid-range and possibly high-end options such as the Radeon RX 8800 and 8700 series. During yesterday's third quarter earning calls, AMD CEO Lisa Su announced that RDNA 4 is expected to launch in early 2025, marking the first time AMD has provided a timeline for the new GPUs now and according to Tom uh, to Tom from Moore's Law is Dead and these are rumors once again from his sources or at least information from his sources uh, it doesn't mean that the information is real or true it seems that RDNA 4 is already ready and they could actually they could actually start producing it right now but it seems that they won't do it because and once again this is a rumor or information from his sources because they want to kind of clear the um, the um, the remaining stock of RDNA 3 that they have here because RDNA 4 will use monolithic dyes instead of the MCM chips that we have here from the cards from for, for the cards like 7700 XT and above, meaning that any card from the 7700 XT and above has multi-chip module design, which which should in theory be of course cheaper to make, but in this case scenario of RDNA 3, it is not cheaper. So with RDNA 4, and in order to have way less complications, way less troubles with uh, with the software and so on, uh, RDNA 4 went back to monolithic design, even for the 8800 XT. So in theory, it should be cheaper, once again, in theory, because, well, less complications and so on. But going back to the topic, we have AMD RDNA launches and we have the 5000 series that was released in July 2017, I believe the RX 57, 5700 XT and 5700. Then we have the RX 6000 series, November 2020. Then the RX 7000 series, December 2023. Um, no, this is... 
this is false, maybe December 2022, I believe. And then our X8000 series for early 2025. Now, this is the statement from Dr. Lisa Su, the AMD CEO. In gaming graphics, revenue declined year over year as we prepare for a transition to our next gen Radeon GPUs based on our RDNA 4 architecture. And this is true. When you are competing to the giant that Nvidia is, when you are doing the same price as they do, of course that people will pick Nvidia. If we go at the same price, Nvidia GPUs usually consume less power. Now on these generations, of course, Nvidia GPUs tend to consume less power than their AMD counterparts, RTX 4, 4000 versus RX 7000 series. They also tend to have more features like the LSS, frame generation in more games, and better done. They they also yeah, they also have ray reconstruction, better ray tracing, and so on. So usually it's a win-win situation at the same price. And as I believe that as soon as AMD started decreasing the prices, their cards started selling better. Especially cards like the XTX, the 7900 XT, or let's say the 7800 XT that I believe sells pretty well. And cards like the 7700 XT that are much better overall than the 4060 Ti. But again, they can see more power, they're generally worse at ray tracing and yeah, but they do have more VRAM, more raw power and so on. In addition to a strong increase in gaming performance, which is important, RDNA 4 delivers significantly higher ray tracing performance and adds new AI capabilities. So this means that RDNA 4 not only delivers better overall performance, at least compared to the previous generation chips, while in some case scenarios comparing the RX 6000 versus 7000 series, well, the performance increase was quite mild in some cases like 10, 15, 20%, which is not that great for a generational leap. With RDNA 4, we get, according to Dr. Lisa Su, once again, we don't have specific numbers, we have a strong increase in gaming performance, which is nice. RDNA 4 also delivers higher, or at least significantly higher ray tracing performance. Now, how much is significantly, it might, it might be like 20%, it might be 30%, it might be even 10%, but it, I believe that significant, significantly we should be looking at 20 to 30% increase in ray tracing performance. And if we are comparing the 8800 XT, for example, to the, um, to the 7800 XT, it should be like 60 or 70% better ray tracing performance. If we go into the rumors that the 8800 XT is better or in between the 7900 XT and the XTX in terms of rasterization, but better in terms of ray tracing performance. And if that's the case, then we can expect something like 60% faster than the 7800 XT in terms, once again, and I repeat, in terms of ray tracing performance. And according to the leaks that we've seen, it seems that the 8800 XT will have the power consumption more or less equal to the to the 7800 XT, so around 300 watts or sometimes even less while performing consistently better. And if the price is right, this will be the card to pick up in the, in the mid to high tier performance. I mean, great or at least very good rasterization performance, much better ray tracing performance and lower power draw. But yeah. And Video Cards also says that, however, we know AMD is expected to showcase RDNA 4 at CES 2025, CES 2025, along with a broad lineup of hardware for laptops and desktops. Typically, it takes like four to six weeks after such announcements for products to launch. Though AMD has previously held showcases with products that took months to reach the market. Yeah, FSR 3, FSR 3 frame generation actually took like one year. Uh, almost one year to reach the first games, which were Forspoken and Immortals of Avium, which had really, really poor implementations of FSR 3 frame generation. With the first real and really good implementation of FSR 3 frame generation being with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. But well, that's another story. And before finishing the video, I just want to talk to you about the new AI capabilities as well. And we all know that, uh, and I even made this video passing right now on the screen, that FSR4, at least according to Jack Wynn, the president of the Radeon part, which is kind of the vice president of the whole AMD company, he said that FSR4 would be AI based for frame generation and upscaling. Um, once again, you can see in this video passing right now on the screen. And we now know that the RDNA 4 cards will also have better and newer AI capabilities, which might mean that we finally get FSR4 like I was supposing uh, that FSR4 will come with RDNA 4 as well. Because it is a really, once again, it is a really good marketing 
strategy, yeah, a marketing strategy, because RDNA4, FSR4, RDNA4 has way higher ray tracing and better capabilities, and at the same time we have FSR4 that it is AI based and delivers much better upscaling or should deliver much better upscaling quality and better frame generation. If this is true, now this is a major leap for the AMD or at least for the people that are considering buying AMD GPUs because they finally have a card priced decently well at least I believe from the leaks that we have like $500, $550 if that's the case, or even $600, depending on the AMD counterparts as well. With, with lower power consumption, good performance, much better ray tracing performance, and a way better upscaling and frame generation, and the battery just run out. And that actually means that people considering Nvidia because of the LSS might now consider AMD, since they will also bring better upscaling, better frame generation, and at the same time, a really, really good price performance card, at least with the 8800 XT from what we've seen. But we need to see more cards from, or more leaks from Nvidia and more leaks from Intel as well, because I'm really eager to see what Intel brings. If Intel is able to bring something on the level of the, um, let's say, 4070, 4070 Super for a really good price, I believe that some people will buy. But well, I guess we need to wait and see. For now, we know at least that RDNA 4 is coming on early 2025, and that, of course, FSR4 is most likely being announced, not coming, but at least being announced alongside alongside RDNA4, especially now that we have PSSR, which once again seems like kind of a disease. Oh, I just, I just got PSSR yesterday, I'm so bad. I do believe that FSR4 is kind of based on PSSR or vice versa, and that it will come with RDNA4. Thank you very much for watching, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about this. If you think once again that um, FSR4 will come with RDNA4, if RDNA4 is really or is going to be really that great or not really at all, if you are interested on RDNA4 or, or not, um, or if you are going just straight NVIDIA, or, or, if you are waiting for something from Intel, because I know that they are really bad on the CPU side right now, so maybe, and again, maybe people can consider their GPUs. And it is actually funny because when AMD actually bought Radeon, it was the Radeon brand that saved them in terms of Company-wise, of course, it was the Radeon brand that saved them uh, when they have the, um, the Bulldozer series and the Piledriver series that were really, really bad. It was actually the PlayStation contracts and the Radeon division that saved them. And now it is kind of the opposite with the CPU division making much more money than the GPU one. And maybe if Intel Battle Mage delivers, it will actually save the CPU division as well. But these are just my two cents on the, on the topic. Well, anyway, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.